In this RC circuit, both capacitors are initially uncharged. We then close the switch S1, find the charge on C1 after two time constants. After S1 is closed, the battery begins charging the capacitor C1 through this loop. The charge on C1 is a 1 minus exponential decay graph. Because it is initially uncharged, then the charge increases, and then it becomes fully charged. So Q1 as a function of time is the final value of Q1 times 1 minus e to the negative t over rc. And in this case, the r is r1, the c is c1. To find the final charge, we can look at a long time after S1 is closed. Since C1 will be fully charged, there will be no more charging current. And since R1 and C1 are in series, together they share the battery's EMF. When there is no current, I times R1 is zero, so R1 gets no voltage and the Capacitor C1 gets all the EMF E. So the final charge equals to Q equals to CV, so it's C1 times the voltage EMF E, and then times 1 minus E to the negative T is now 2 times the time constant. So this is 2 times R1 C1 over R1 C1. So the R1 C1 cancel and we get C1e times 1 minus e to the negative 2 is 0.135. Therefore, this gives us 0.865 C1 times e. After S1 has been closed for a long time, S1 is now opened, and then S2 is closed. Write, but do not solve, a differential equation that can be used to solve for the charge on C2 as a function of time. Please also find the current in R2 and the charge on each capacitor immediately after S2 is closed and a long time later. Back when S1 was closed, the battery charged C1's left plate positive and the right plate negative, while C2 stayed uncharged. With S1 being open and S2 closed, the top part of the circuit is no longer connected. So the circuit now is just this part. After S2 is closed, C1 will charge up C2. Positive charges will flow this way onto C2 and negative charges that way. So the current flows counterclockwise. To write the differential equation, we start with the loop rule. I'm going to start here and go clockwise. First, we go against the current across R2. Since we're going against the current, the potential increases by I times R, R2. And then we go from positive to negative plate, so the potential is going to decrease by whatever voltage we have across the capacitor. And for the capacitor, V equals to Q over C, so this will be Q1 over C1. And then, since C2's right plate is going to be negatively charged, and this is positively charged. So when we go cross this way from negative to positive plate, the potential is going to increase by whatever voltage we have across C2, which is Q over C. Now we're back to the starting point, so the change in electric potential should be zero. Now we have one equation, but we have three unknowns, I, Q1, and Q2. To reduce the three unknowns to one unknown for our one equation, we have to replace two of those in terms of the third. Since we want an equation for Q2, I'm going to replace I with the dQ2 dt. We know that the current is in the correct direction, 
so this current should not be negative. Since C2 is being charged, Q2 is increasing, so dQ dt is a positive number, which is just fine. No need to fix the sign. What about Q1? How can we replace Q1 in terms of Q2? When C1 charges up C2, all the charges C2 gets come from C1. So the two capacitors have to share the charges on C1 just before S2 was closed. Before S2 was closed, the final charge on C1 was C1 times E. This means uh, Q1 plus Q2 must equal to C1 times E. So we can replace Q1 with uh, C1E minus Q2. Here we have our differential equation. How about immediately after S2 is closed? Immediately after a change is made, the charges on the two capacitors are the same as before because it takes time to change the amount of charges on a capacitor. So Q1 is still C1 times E and Q2 is still zero. Q2 being zero means C2 gets zero volts. So R2 gets all the voltage of C1. Since Q equals to CV, the voltage on C1 is E. So R2 also gets voltage E. Therefore, this current is V over R, E over R2. How about a long time later? A long time after a change is made, the capacitors have either done charging or done discharging. So there is no more charging or discharging current. So the current through R2 is zero. Since R2 gets zero current, that means R2 gets zero volts. R2 getting zero volts means C2 gets all the voltage C1 has. So the voltage across C1 equals to the voltage across C2. So the moment S2 is closed, C1 has charge while C2 has none. And then charges begin to flow from C1 to C2 until an equilibrium is reached. That equilibrium happens when the two capacitors reach the same voltage. So C1's voltage would decrease from E and C2's voltage would increase from zero. C1 would discharge and C2 would charge. And when the two capacitors reach the same potential difference between their plates, charges stop flowing. Now let's find Q1 and Q2 when the equilibrium is reached. Since Q equals to CV, when they reach equilibrium, they have the same voltage. That means the capacitor with the larger capacitance gets more charge. And this means also that Q1 to Q2 equals to C1 to C2. Since the two capacitors share the total charge C1E, each gets a fraction of the C1E. A fraction of the C1E. If we chop the total charge into C1 plus C2 pieces, Q1 would get C1 pieces out of the total of C1 plus C2 pieces, while Q2 gets C2 out of the C1 plus C2 pieces. So the sum of Q1 plus Q2 is C1E, and Q1 to Q2 is C1 to C2.